Human book series, which is really about these times of great change in which we're living. And today I have with me my amazing, wonderful, cosmic friend, Cecily Rossi. Hi, Cess. How are you today? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. Hello, Superwoman. We've been friends since um, Y2K, right? We were both in Mount Shasta at that time, and somehow we met up. I don't even remember all the details, but... Um, and we have been just soul sisters since then. I and, remember. Do you? Yeah, well, I remember looking across the group of people, <laughs> and I saw you, and I'm like... And your eyes were like these cosmic, like... I don't know. <laughs> Not like human. I I mean, sort of human, obviously, but something else. And I'm like, who is that? I want to know her. You know? Beautiful. And yeah. today we're going to talk about this is this show that we're doing every week, every Wednesday around this time live on YouTube is called Multidimensional Living. And we'll be having different guests along with us. But today we're talking about hybrids. That's a pretty crazy topic, isn't it? So when, yes. you, when you say looking across and seeing my eyes and, um, you know, what are hybrids? What are, are we all 100% human here on Earth? I think that's like a big question, right? If you want to go there, let's go there. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So it's an interesting subject, and it's kind of a crazy subject. I know Bridget Nielsen is somebody who I listen to a lot, who I learned a lot from. Did, did you listen to her? Love her. I mean, all the stuff she talks about, I can relate to. I'll be honest. Ever since I was little, I knew I came from the stars. So what does that say? And, and as time goes on, I've realized a lot more. Or I think I know I have actually, and um, I don't know if we're ready to go there yet. But yeah, I think I think there's a lot of people on the earth with altered DNA for, uh -huh. for the positive, yes, to, to take us into the higher realms because we can't keep living the way it's been on earth. It's just brutal, right? right? I talk about that a lot. We live actually um, in an area where a lot of young people, international young people from all over the world travel through our area. And mm -hmm. I meet someone and I go, you're a star seed. You're a star yeah. seed. And I think people who even have kids and grandkids know at this time, they see these children and they realize they're like really super intelligent they're gentle they're living in their hearts i'm getting chills as i'm even talking about it um but the this heightened state of what our abilities are um i think i mean we are in this time called the great shift of the ages and what's happening is humanity is in something called the great awakening now i just want to share this really quick because it's very interesting you know the the powers that were the um, that could kind of look at computer knowledge assimilated and see what was happening in the future. Um, governmental agencies, um, alphabet agencies used to do this. They could never get past 2012. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that that is because in 2012, we entered this great shift of the ages. We entered a time of great change where humanity was going to be a waking up and mm -hmm. we are remembering that we're creator beings. So as we wake up, we realize that everything we do and say now is helping create our future. Like nobody can see into the future anymore because it's being created by us. So at the same time as this wave happened on planet earth, souls had to be born who said i'm willing to jump in there and help with this great awakening i'm willing to jump in and help all these different people that i know remember who they are remember what their abilities are and i'm willing to carry with me new imprints in my dna and so I don't know. I want to ask you, Sess, I know you do QHHT and other self-hypnosis programs to help people access their higher self, their other aspects of self, their past and future lives. 
Um, what are you seeing in your walk? Are you seeing people who are bringing in qualities that are, we might call them paranormal, you know, they're kind of beyond the average old human qualities? I, I mean, it's such fascinating work, honestly, and I've had a lot of clients who don't even really have past lives on Earth. That's been wow. interesting. That, I'm getting so, chills on that one, yeah. too. So we don't do any past life. We just go off planet, and they're literally in this void of pure creation, of pure love, and these other beings that are almost formless, not always, but many times, and they're just cohabitating and creating this colors you know, or geometries wow. or things like this. And then other people come from other um, star systems to, like I had one woman who's this magnificent healer, um, high powered healer, um, shamanist. And this was really crazy. We first went to Egypt and she's like, I'm about to rob a pyramid with my friend, you know? Wow. And next thing, yeah. And then, and then it, it didn't, I mean, all this stuff happened. That's really exciting, but I, it's just too much to go into. And then, and no, they didn't rob the pyramid. And then um, next thing you know, she'd become an archaeologist herself. Instead of robbing pyramids, she decided to become an archaeologist. Cute. And she was Egyptian. And um, so she found this whole dig. And then all of a sudden, we skipped to where she came from, another star system. And she literally came from that star system to have that lifetime to help humanity remember by that dig by, by, excuse me, by unearthing that particular temple because wow. it had codes and frequencies that would help pe people remember who they are and where they came from. Pretty amazing. Yeah. And, then, and then I did a session with your beloved and he, I don't know if I should say that, he, um, he was connected and he was actually part of building pyramids on another planet yes right mm -hmm. and then all those pyramids were connected to other systems that are connected to earth so i mean there's just so much that i'm learning about um reality reality um from doing these systems and uh, this healing and also my reality is shifting so much every time i do a, a session you know like i'm right i don't really feel 3d anymore well I'm afraid to die like so many Beautiful. Not afraid to die. And so we're really realizing that we're multidimensional humans. And wh what does that mean? That we're not only 3D. You know, there's the fourth and fifth dimensions we talk about. And I believe that means we're, it's kind of like molecularly expanding into being able to operate with our higher senses, our intuition, our sense of feeling about things, our knowing that comes to us that's maybe beyond the logical mind. And we're learning to um, to connect with that and to know that it's um, that it's real and then to live according to that, you know, instead of like, oh, I have to do what my left brain tells me. Mm -hmm. But so and, and back to the question, what do you think about um, souls coming in with more advanced abilities? Oh, um, I mean, I've just seen it in people I talk to where I live. There's a lot of young people that gather because where I live is kind of a vortex also right. like where you live. Yes. And mm -hmm. just the way they speak, even where they're coming from is so different and new and beautiful and in a much more elevated. And then you see these little kids and, you know, it's, it's just been a beautiful, beautiful experience to watch this happen. I mean, honestly, we're, we were those too when we yes. were little. Mm -hmm. Yes, we were, but I feel like I was a little more, I don't know, restricted by what I was surrounded by. Maybe I think parents are a little bit more open to their kids being in the flow. But what I say about these children is mm. they didn't even come, and the young people, people in their 20s and 30s, a lot of them didn't even, or teens, they didn't come here to be part of the old construct, the old world, the old rigid world that said, you have to go do this, you have to go to school, go to college, go get a job, Just keep doing this routine your whole life and fit into some little square peg, you know, in a hole. Um, a lot of them didn't come to do that. And we talk often about if money and time were not issues, what would we all be doing? We would be super creative beings. And um, sometimes I ask that to people. I say, you know, if you didn't have to make money and 
you weren't committed to having to do this job because the money, like I've asked taxi drivers and they say, I say, what would you do? And they say, wow, I guess I'd go work at home. And I say, yeah, and then what would you do after that? And they say, well, I don't know, maybe I'd go camp in the woods. You know, we're, we've been programmed in the old culture that we have certain routines we need to fit into. And so now these children and young people and even slightly older young people are coming in who didn't come in to do that kind of stuff. And they're having to find new paths. I mean, how do you feel that they're finding new paths? How are they finding, like these young people that you're surrounded by, how are they finding paths to manage and to support themselves in the world? Well, they're just being creative and they're doing whatever comes to them naturally. And they're not so much worried about money. You know, so a lot of them have like um, social media platforms or some of them are designing clothes. Some of them are making chocolate or herbal medicines, you know, whatever just comes to them. They're just flowing with with their life, you know, whatever it is. It's nothing like massive. It's just beautiful. Some of them are very scientifically minded or they're making gadgets. Do you know what I mean? I do. And I see the same thing. I see the young people that come near us. I learn from them. I go, wow, they have such a beautiful flow. They're not pushing. They're not, they're just being, they're being who they truly are. And, um, so, so do you feel like defining what this process that gets talked about of hybrid children or humans who are not 100% of the old human fabric? You know, I mean, defining, I don't know if I'm the ultimate authority, but I certainly have been noticing a lot. Um, and, and as we're raising in frequency, this is kind of interesting. I've been noticing this in the last week. I can spot people that are hybrids because mm-hmm. their faces are changing. And I don't know if their faces are changing or if I'm able to see them in a different way than I would have before because my frequency is going up. Do you know right. what I'm saying? It could be both. I, I'm not, I probably is both since they're looking like that, you know. But yeah, so defining you, it. So what do what you do mean you when you see their faces change? Well, somebody that might have looked very human before, like mm-hmm. normal, all of a sudden their eye sockets are much bigger, mm-hmm. right? Their faces have come like this, and then their eye sockets are bigger. Their lips are smaller. Um, I see more lights around them. Um, I can just sort of, when I'm talking to people, I just sort of phase in and out and I see that other presence there, that other whole energy of the other influence they have that's not quite human or what we know is human. That's always been a 3D human for, for a very long time, let's say. And, um, and I'm starting to see these things because the, our 3D reality, for me, the 3D reality is pretty much going away. Yes. And what does that mean to you? I mean, for example, I have a friend who's fully corporate, fully, fully, fully invested. God bless her. And today she told me, and you know, they're postponing again, going back to work again. Now it's been like over years. And and the reason is nobody will come to work. And, you know, in a way, that's the blessing. Nobody wants to come to work. They like this new style. They don't want to commute into the city and be in these big skyscrapers. So now what's going to happen in the cities when, you know, everything's going to change. Everything is changing, you know? So, and I think that's the blessing that's come out of the COVID, the whole COVID Mm -hmm. exercise, whatever we want to call it. Um, It's really helped a lot of people get in touch with who they really are, what they really want to do with their time. And most of all, what's important to them, you know, because if we're doing things that are not so important to us, we get depressed, we get worn down. Um, And when we're facing, you know, whether our life is even going to go on, you know, what if something happens to me? Have I done what I really want to do with my life? You know, that um, I think that's come up for a lot of people. Like, what's really important to me? Am I wasting time doing things that are not important to me? And how can I, how can I live more according to my own heart? Mm-hmm. So I want to run this by you because okay. when I used to listen to Bridget Nielsen, and she's a really cool young woman who I think I think she might have grown up in Sedona. She's got 
pretty conscious parents who've supported her in her work. And if somebody wanted to learn more about hybrid children, she'd be a good person to listen to. I'll just yeah. recommend her because she's certainly more of an expert than I am. She kind of grew up on Bashar too. Oh, on Bashar, nice. Yeah, Okay. Yeah. her dad's really into it. So she went to see him many, many times. And Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. And so, and she's an example of a young person who never put themselves into the old system. They began following their vision, their dreams and one of the things she shares about hybrid children is that there's a way that off-planet beings maybe even take an egg that a woman maybe a woman has a fertilized egg inside her and there's a, a embryo growing and that some new additional dna or additional information or additional soul energy is implanted in that embryo so that it's more than just the original mama and papa it's one mm -hmm. way that a more advanced soul can um, develop in a, in a human body and become uh, and grow up to be a human and those beings that have had that sometimes are, are visited throughout their life and they keep getting upgrades right and there's something else that happens. Can I share? Please. So I know this from direct experience, actually. Um, I had beings come and take my eggs. And that is amazing. I think that is really cool. I know you've told me that. Yeah, and the, and the trippy thing was, well, it's a long story. I don't know if you want me to go into it now, but I mean, they did. I'm doing this again. It's really warm where I am. Okay. And okay. so excuse me for... Wiping my face off. I'm just like, I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, there's sweat running down my face. I need to clean You're it. moist. Yes. You're moist. How lovely. Do you see? Uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's nice. Um, so, okay, so they came and took my eggs and it was kind of frightening and they put like this thing around my head so that I wouldn't move. And if I moved, it just hurt my nerves. It didn't like do damage to me, but I didn't want to move. Right. It hurt. This kind of thing with black arms went inside of me and like took eggs and there were these different size beings there doing it and it happened a few months apart and then I heard this big loud noise and they took off probably a ship right? and what age were you when that was happening 28 that that was those were the two times where I knew it happened but I know I've been visited my entire life okay? the thing is when you told me that story I began to think I, I've never had physical children but you have and I helped my dad spray an apple orchard as a kid, which I feel like um, lowered my progesterone levels. But I also had chronic um, discomfort in my female organs. Mm -hmm. And I began to think, after you told me that story, that maybe when I was in my late teens, that I also had that happen to me as well. I mean, I began having these memories flash. Or you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of people do say that they have female reproductive problems after that. Happened. Right. I didn't. Um, but yeah, I've heard that. And did you have your son after that or before? No, he was already born. Already born. Yeah. Born. Well, and. Well, there's one more part. Can, yeah. I, can I throw this See? part in? Yes. So years pass. And then all of a sudden it was like. I'd broken through or I was allowed to break through some kind of a screen that was put on what I was allowed to think about and I realized I have children off planet. Right. Right. And I know that I've had dreams where I've been in look looking at all kinds of children, you know, and, and since I have learned that um and there some of them were probably mine. And then that's what Bridget Nielsen talks about a lot because a lot of right. people have these children and yeah, I, I don't have enough memory any you know, and I don't have enough to know. I mean, it would be a good thing to do a regression about actually for me to learn more. Yes. About that. Yeah. Because I'll just say this. I mean, I think you're to me you're obviously a kind of paranormal human. I, I feel like I am. I mean, I feel like I I've never felt like a normal human from the time I was a little kid, you know. So that knowing that we came in with um, certain abilities, certain knowledge, certain knowledge of other dimensions, other lives, other um, realities, so to speak. Um, 
I think all of that is something important. I, and I'd like to, I, one of the reasons we're sharing it today is because if anybody else has this, maybe mm -hmm. you can begin to categorize it a little bit or understand why you've had those feelings or what what is maybe possible for you. Because we know, I mean, we know right now really thousands and maybe even millions of very advanced souls have been coming into the planet for let's say the last 50 years or more um, i'd say millions millions mi millions even Hopefully the last <laughs> i think one of the big um i think w right around world war ii was mm -hmm. a big turning point i think um the maybe the extraterrestrial races who help us the multi-dimensional races who help us other levels of our own being who help us um, knew that humanity couldn't keep participating in these world wars, that there was neg too much negativity running things behind the scenes, and that there had to be a change, that people had to begin incarnating here who would be awake and could come in to live an awakened life and to begin implementing a new consciousness among humanity. And the Great Awakening had to take place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it was, well, I know that it was after the atom bomb went off then, because the thing is that everything exists in dimensional layers, right? And so if we're going to be blasting holes through our dimension, it's going to affect all the other dimensions and it's going to cause great havoc. So that's when they realized they're going to come here and, and they've literally stopped many, many, many bombs from going off. They just disable them. And so yes. they've really been watching us um, and they're helping us, thank God. And maybe we're them. <laughs> yes, absolutely. One of my favorite stories was, I think it was the um, Canadian minister, minister of war or somebody like that. And they were getting ready to do a nuclear test, um, mm -hmm. I think in the South Pacific and all of their nukes were just completely disarmed. And thank Thanks. goodness. Thank goodness. And it doesn't take much, I think, when an advanced race says, look, no more of this. Um, it's just like a flick of a switch for them to turn off the ability to activate those things. And right now we've got things like do weapons and weather manipulation. And I think the same thing can really easily happen with that. There can be just a stopping of it. Sorry, you're not going to do that anymore. But for right now, humanity is having to learn are we going to put up with this? Are we going to step up to the plate? Are we going to say what's okay and not okay here on planet Earth? And that's part that's right. of the Great Awakening. The Great yeah. Awakening is who am I really? What do I really want to do? Am I willing to just keep living and working for an old system that has been really harvesting energy off of humanity for thousands of years? That's right. And mm -hmm. where humanity is ready to wake up and to be, to really we can take responsibility for ourselves. We can be creative, beautiful, joyful beings on planet Earth, and we're ready. We're ready to take over. We're ready to do that and be responsible for ourselves. Right? Well, a lot of us are. Yes. Well, <laughs> and you know what? It only takes a small percentage of shifted consciousness to really help the whole shift. So that's what this is about for anyone who's awake. So I have something else that I've seen many, many times is that mm -hmm. all these beautiful young beings that are being born right. uh, are basically just what's going to happen is the old system is going to go as people leave the planet, the older generations and the old systems. Not that anyone was evil, but the systems were not great. And as these younger people come up, all the new systems will just come into place very organically and beautifully. The thing that does bother me is the amount of drugs that are put out for people to, you know, for the, to disable our young people, that really, really disturbs me. And um, I just do feel like there is a, a war on our young people because I think, I think whatever that old gnarly ass system is that's in, was in place, um, still thinks it's in place, um, ha, has is aware of that and is kind of doing all these other um, nefarious sort of uh, manipulations on our youth. Um, including um, all the drugs that are out there for people. I mean, there's so many that are just devastating. And, and the yes. people that are, you know, they're, let's say they 
anyway, I don't want to go negative, but I just see also a lot of kids that don't have opportunities or because of the system the way it is, they turn to things like that. And these are kids that also came in on that same beam, right. the same dreams to, to be part of the change. So right. that, that's something that I worry about. Yeah, I think it's easy also to get discouraged or go down the wrong path. At, yeah. even as an enlightened person it's one reason we do the 21st century superhuman things that we do because mm-hmm. everybody is able to be a 21st century superhuman and it takes maybe living a little more disciplined life um, i'm starting to broadcast five days a week and mondays on twitch doing healthy lifestyle how we take care of our immune system probably some things on how to make cbd products and various other things like that very exciting and then we're doing multi-dimensional living and I'll be doing future science one day and I'll be doing surfing the shift news and views with Alexander Ooh. Russell. And Ooh, like- um, yeah, so we have such, there's a lot of, um, it's one reason we're doing what we're doing. It's one reason I do what I do. It's one reason I wrote my books because it's to help guide us through these times so that we don't just fall apart with the challenges that are here. Cause this is probably I'd say it's the most challenging time ever in human history. That's what I believe. And so it really takes knowing ourselves, knowing our inner commitment. Um, so, Sess, I know you brought your cards. Yes. Can I add one thing to that? Yes, please. So staying high frequency is actually work, okay? Yes. And like, like you're saying, it's like it's a choice constantly to stay yes. in a positive frequency. It's a choice of what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? How am I, everything. What am I going to get exercise? Every little thing. Yes. How am I going to treat people? What am I going to ingest in terms of news and media, et cetera? Right. So yeah, it is, it is a whole discipline. It's it's a very intense discipline, actually. I'm going to be honest. Yes. I, I, I call it our walk of mastery. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. So can you yeah, give us no, some... There's no letting up. There's no, because then you have to start isn't. off, build your frequency... Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I brought some cards today. Just Give us some guidance. Holding them and praying on them that whatever comes through is for, ah, uh, this is the first one. That is for the benefit of whoever's watching this. And the first one, this is awesome. Oh my gosh, these are amazing. Ah, the power of joy, Maitreya, look at that. Can you see? Yes, oh, I love that. The, power of the laughing Buddha. Yeah, so we were talking about maintaining a, a frequency yes. that's uh, conducive. Very to- good. And then, okay, wait, let me pull another one because all the ones that are just all of a sudden popping up were so amazing. But let me just try to get one. Oh, it's really hot where I am, too. Oof. Yeah. Okay. Um, ah, here we go. Let's see what we got. That's interesting. Okay, here's what I got. Right, both. Oh, yeah. And right. So Mm. maybe connect, see what's coming through. Yes. Ask questions and see what happens. Yes. For our next steps. And then trust Vishnu. Mm, beautiful Vishnu trust yes I find we really need to trust the universe it's like trust the force Luke you know yeah when we breathe smile and love and we center in our heart and we can trust that the universe is going to flow our way it's going to help us people and events are going to come along that are going to help us accomplish what we're setting out to doing and it just happens beautifully you know can I add one little thing? Please. So I I got a future. I, was, I guess it would be called a progression, right? Into my future. Right. And my future self was talking to me. And my future self said, you're getting all those little nags and nags, all those, those feelings and those whispers. And all of that is to help you be in your very best life, to live your true destiny, right? And so trust and right and all that is just to like we have like i you made your life incredibly magical in a very short time by all of a sudden just going inside writing trusting and your life just went just like that right just amazing and 
I think everyone needs to do that. I need to do that more. Like that's just something I'm, I'm becoming much more aware of. Like to live in the magic, which I've lived in, requires completely going with the heart and the feelings and the trust. Yes. And trusting that guidance. Because it could, that guidance could be, of course, our guides. And it could also be our future self or a higher dimensional self that couldn't fully embody into our bodies at this time telling us you're going off track you should be doing this you'll be much more happy you know so you'll be fulfilling your destiny and that was it that's what i wanted to say yes mm -hmm. I, it's true it's true well i want to thank you for being here with me today thank and you. um I have to figure out, I have this little light flashing over my head and I'm not sure why my lights are not just set up. We're kind of having a different lighting outside today. So, um, but I'm really glad we're here and we'll do this again next Wednesday. We'll have different guests with us and we're gonna just mm -hmm. keep talking about what multidimensional living is all about. I'm excited, so yeah. excited. And um, I'd love to see the comments of whatever anyone else has to share what they their thoughts are or what experiences they've had too yes well absolutely yeah. we want to hear what your experience with feeling like a multi-dimensional being is if you've yeah. known or seen anybody you feel like is paranormal or it's a kind of the common catch word is calling them hybrids but but let's just call them more advanced humans you know that the advanced humans that are coming to the planet to help be here as part of this great awakening. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, because we all are learning from each other at this right. time. Right. Absolutely. Which is also how we have all these platforms to share information. It's just, it is, it's, it's, it's transformative. It is. It. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Kara. Okay, sorry, Kara. That's okay. Kara. No, I put two of your names together. A lot of people call me Kira. That's kind of I go by yeah. that more than anything these days. Let me see where my outro is because I want to turn it on. There it is. Okay, so we will say goodbye, and um, you'll be on for just another minute with me. And I love you bunches. And me too, honey. And I want to remind everybody to mm -hmm. breathe, smile and love because by so doing we change our own neurobiology and by changing ourselves we change the world see you soon sas if you feeling And these words can take you far I am a 21st century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time the one that's got the codes who's part of the Galactic Federation. She's like code cards. She's really excited and actually she's called a meeting of all the people that were in the class because she just got this huge download of I don't know what. So we're gonna find